Hey guys, how's it going? So today I wanna to give you an update on our Flower Alley experiment. I'm super excited about how they're all doing. So the whole goal with this experiment was to take 10 of the exact same container and then plant them up with really simple arrangements, utilizing either three or four four inch plants rather than my usual, like I would probably try to fit five to seven in this type of container. Uh, but they're growing so beautifully that I really want to highlight each one of them, talk about the plants, we're gonna do a little bit of maintenance. But to do that, because they're kind of up against a green background, it's a little bit hard to distinguish each plant. So we, this is our setup. We set this up today. We've got a little shade that I get to stand under and it makes it easier to see all the detail of the plants when they're not in the bright full sun. And then we got this uh, gorilla ladder of sorts. It's like a platform, it's awesome. So we're gonna use it as a table today. So we're just gonna go ahead and disconnect them from the irrigation system. That's the other thing. We have these all on drip. They all get the exact same amount of water, the exact same amount of light. So they're all given the same care. And we've been fertilizing with the water soluble fertilizer once a week. So anyway, and then when we're all done, we'll use the quarter inch couplers to hook them all back up to the irrigation system. So let's get the first container, oh, up here. Another thing I was gonna mention <laughs> real quick, the first two were planted May 15th, second two, May 18th, the next three, May 28th, and the last three, June 6th. So the last three aren't even, yeah, they're not even a month old. And they've had like an incredible, like just incredible growth. So anyway, now let's get the first container up here. So container number one planted up May 15th. There are three plants in here, one heated up yellow gallardia, one Wicked Witch Coleus, and one Super Bell's Dreamsicle. I'm not gonna do anything to this container today because I think it's phenomenal. I'm not gonna do any trimming or anything like that. And honestly, I thought for sure the Coleus was gonna be the one that took over this arrangement because this type of Coleus gets rather large. And I think it will, I think it will continue to put on growth. We've actually had some really cold weekends. Uh, a lot of uh, overcast and rain, which is very atypical for us. And so I think that that has stunted some of the real heat lovers like this one uh, to you know, really put on a lot of growth really early. But I believe that it will start filling in. But this Gallardia is just, I can't even believe it. Like, let me spin this pot around if I can, just so you can see how huge that is. And it's grown perfectly. Like it knew to grow forward, you know, and kind of, almost frame these other two plants right here. And I do have to say that these Gallardias are very um, water hungry in the beginning. Like if you do not water them consistently and on time in the day, they will wilt. But once they're established, they don't tend to do that as much. That's what I've found anyway in my experience with them. But I've never seen when I haven't had one grow this big before. Uh, the thing I like about it, it's the most attractive plants, plant to pollinators in this entire lineup. This one is usually always covered with honeybees. In fact, there was one just here a minute ago um, and they're just, they've been buzzing around this plant. Uh, but you don't have to deadhead it one. When you have spent blooms, this is what the spent bloom looks like. So, I mean, this is a, of course a fresh bloom right here, but they're still interesting even when they're not in bloom. And so I want to keep those because I love to use that sort of texture in flower arrangements. And speaking of flower arrangements, they're wonderful because they have super long stems. Like there's this stem that goes, it's at least 18 inches long, really nice and straight. Um, so that's wonderful. The color of the yellow contrasting the darkness of the Wicked Witch is beautiful. And then of course the dream sickle kind of brings in that, it makes it look a little bit more tropical to me. So anyway, super happy with this arrangement. And I think all three of these are compatible. I'm seeing a little bit of yellowing on the Superbells foliage, but I'm seeing that on most all of the Superbells because we have these all set up on the same drip. Superbells tend to like to dry out a tiny bit between watering. So to keep my Gallardia happy, I have to give this pot a little bit more water than the Superbells probably likes, but it's doing it and looking great anyway. So, and that's when it's important too, to use the right fertilizer. So the water soluble that I use has chelated iron in it, and that's key to keeping things looking nice and there are a couple other super bells that don't look quite this nice but i'll show you what they look like and what i'm going to do to them so let's put this one down and get container number two before i get further into this i should have mentioned before that the pots that we used have a 14 inch diameter they're the garland jardinier from unique stone um, so just to give you an idea of what size this pot is because under that first one you can't really tell because um, you can't see much of the pot anymore this second arrangement here 
has one Truffula Pink Gomfrina, which this plant is a beast. We grew this in the landscape last year. Uh, I didn't have any in containers, so I wanted to see what it would do in containers versus our experience with it in the landscape because they just got so, so big. These make an excellent cut flower because when they dry, they maintain pretty much the same color. It will lighten just slightly, but it's still that nice, nice vibrant pink. Uh, the next plant here is called Plum Dandy Alternanthera. Um, this is actually the first year I have ever used this plant before in my life. And I know a lot of you guys use it a lot because it's a really wonderful alternative to a sweet potato vine. You know, just a nice uh, kind of bold trailing plant that can fill in your container and contrast your flowers. And sometimes it's nice to have that, kind of like in the first container with the coleus, you need that, that something to ground the whole design and kind of create a little bit of rest almost instead of you know, just pure color and pure, you know, a lot of the same texture. Um, we've got a strawberry punch uh, super bells here that this is one is one that's not looking as good. Um, I just, I think it's been getting too much water here but the foliage down underneath is looking a little bit, little bit better. So I am going to uh, trim this one up a little bit today. Hopefully that'll recharge it and help it get through. Now it has been, like I said, it's been rainy and overcast that can um, hurt this too because it's getting extra water on top of you know, everything else. So there's that, I'll trim, trim that in a second. The fourth plant in here is a Supertunia honey. I love this plant. I love how it's sent a branch over this way and it's starting to intermingle over on this side because this right here, the Plum Dandy and the Super Tunia honey are, honey are gorgeous. Okay, so let me kind of face this toward me a little bit better so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna take off the outer layer here and we're gonna go down to where the leaves look a little bit darker, a little bit nicer. And then hopefully in our next update video, I'll have positive news to share with you guys. Um, like I said, you want to make sure your uh, fertilizer has chelated iron in it, which ours does. Um, but I think this was more of a water issue more than anything else. So that's something that we'll just keep in mind moving forward. That already looks better, just having all of that upper growth gone. And now the plant won't send energy into keeping all of this junky stuff alive. Um, it will rather send energy into new growth. Okay, I need to twist it a little more. We'll take care of this section. It has gotten kind of big though. It's like starting to spread out, which is very nice. Oh, I don't want to accidentally trim my honey here. So the super bells is gone right there. Now I could like tuck that one up like that. Looks kind of pretty like that. Oops. Or, well, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like that for the time being. And none of these things need to be deadheaded. In fact, I don't think anything in any of these containers need any sort of maintenance other than if you know something like that happens or if you get something that's starting to look kind of straggly. But all of these are the type of plants that they'll continue blooming whether or not you deadhead. I should mention quick that it's a good idea not to take more than 20% off of your plants um, when you are trimming them back. Today, I think I took off a little bit more than that. You just wanna make sure that you're leaving enough leaves to soak in sunshine because that's what create, you know, the plant soaks that in and it creates energy for the plant and that's what will help it grow. So we wanna still leave enough of that, which I think I did. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Oh, hey, container number three. So the first two containers I just showed you, I just wanted to reiterate those ones were planted on May 15th. This one and the next one I show, I'm gonna show you were planted on May 18th. So we've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four plants in this container arrangement. Uh, first one is our Thriller, which is a Skyrocket Penicetum. Now this was a little bit of a risk, I guess, because Penicetums do grow quite large, but I wanted to see what this one would do, given the fact that it's a little bit restricted in its, the amount of root space it has, um, also the amount of space it has around it. And this one tends to grow slower than the other Penicetums that I've grown, like the Purple Fountain Grass, um, and the fireworks penicetum, this one kind of stays a little bit smaller and then it's not till the end of the season or middle to end part of the season when it really puts on its upward momentum, for me anyway, in the past. On this side here, we have a sparkling amethyst superbina. Amazing plant, look at that. I just like, I haven't even touched these planters and it just looks amazing. Right here as a trailer, we've got a Dichondra Silver Falls. I found that people either really like this plant or they really don't like it. Like I love it, Erin doesn't care for it as much, but I think it's a really nice soft spiller in this arrangement. However, there are leaves stuck in it right now that I need to clean out. 
And then the very last, actually, before we go on to that, I think I'm gonna do a little trimming on this because you can see how much further down it is than the, the bottom of this container, and I don't really want it trailing on the ground. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of a trim. Man, this Lazy Susan is wonderful underneath the pots. I love it. I don't want them to all be the same exact length so it doesn't look like a bowl cut here. Last plant in here is a Super Bells called Double Blue. You can see the yellowing here. Again, I think it's a water issue. Um, yeah, Super Bells, this was a little bit of a risk. I think I mentioned it in the videos when I planted these with other plants in that they usually like to dry out more than other ones. Um, so I oh, usually steer away from it, but I thought I would give it a try um, just based on the fact that these were gonna be so consistently cared for. Uh, but I do think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one back a little bit because the undergrowth here is really nice and dark green. And I don't want the plant to continue sending energy into trying to correct whatever is going on on the, the upper part of these branches. So I'm just gonna give it a light shear. And I know this is probably painful to watch because I am cutting off flowers, but I think in the end, it'll be better for the plant's overall health. I could have never been a hairstylist. <laughs> it would have been a disaster. Okay, so it will take probably one to two weeks for this plant to start to rebound and start pushing more blooms. But I think uh, doing this trim will really make a difference. Okay, let's get the fourth pot up here. So this container has three different plants in it and the centerpiece that's in the back here, I'm gonna twist the pot so you can see it because it's honestly not put on very much growth. This is a Sunstar Pink Pentis. I kind of had the same experience with Pentis last year. I was able to trial them here in our garden. I know that they grow really well in the south where it's hot and humid consistently and the evenings are even pretty warm. It's just been a really erratic year in terms of temperature. We'll have, you know, three or four 96, 98 degree days and then it'll drop 30, 35 degrees and it'll be 63 degrees for three days in a row with rain and overcast. So I think that sometimes can set plants back a little bit. It does have some buds about ready to open. There are new buds down here. So I think if we can get some consistency and heat, we'll see more growth in that one. Right here, we have a Supertunia Raspberry Rush, which is doing beautifully. I grew this last year for the first time, had about the same experience. It's not a type of Supertunia that wants to be um, like super aggressive and take over really fast, which I appreciate that in some plants and in others, I appreciate them kind of staying a little bit more to themselves. That way you get a little bit more time before they wanna to try to gobble up something like a Bacopa, which typically don't have the same vigor as a Supertunia. So I think it's been a very good mix. This Bacopa right here is a snowstorm snow globe. There is a little bit of yellow in the leaves, but it's not throughout the whole plant. So I don't think I'm gonna do any trimming because you know, other than that little bit of yellow, it's in full bloom, it has grown, it has bulked up, and that makes me happy because Bacopas in the past, in past years, I've tried some of the older varieties, and I think that they have been improved to a point where they just perform more consistently through the heat. For me, before, it seemed like when it got really hot, they would start to um, fizzle out a little bit. It was really hard to get them to revive if they dried down a little bit too much, and this one's just really performing really well. So. That's it for this one, let's get the next one. The next three containers were planted on May 28th and I love this one. It's like a pot full of sunshine. It's so bright and happy and cheerful looking. The first plant here is Lady Godiva Yellow Calendula and I have talked about this plant a lot. We made a calendula salve, which is amazing. Um, I highly recommend making that. If you haven't yet and haven't planted this plant yet, you really should um, because it's an excellent cut flower. It's an excellent, uh, plant to have in your vegetable garden in containers, and then you can make stuff out of it, which is really cool. Um, but it throws up these double yellow blooms all season long, and even throughout the winter in our greenhouse. The next plant here is a diamond snow euphorbia. And this is the smallest of the three euphorbias because you know there's diamond frost and diamond mountain. This one stays much more compact. The bloom to leaf ratio is insane. I mean, it just looks like this ball of white blooms. It's amazing. Um, and definitely more dense in its bloom habit uh, as opposed to the frost and mountain. Those are a little bit more uh, like ethereal, I guess, a little bit more airy um, than this one. But I think that all of these plants are well suited to grow with each other because, you know, you worry about putting this like with a Super Tudia Vista bubblegum, I would never do that because the Vista bubblegum would want to just, it would take over this entire container and it would just bully this one, like it would smother it. So I think these are all really working well together. 
The next one here is a uh, Goldilocks Rocks Bidens. So this beautiful, like the leaf, leaf structure is really ferny and delicate. And then it has these happy kind of daisy shaped yellow flowers throughout the season. And then the last one here is a Lemon Slice Superbells, which actually has grown quite large. The leaves all look really good. I'm not really seeing much yellowing on this one as opposed to some of the other Superbells we've looked at. But if I turn this, you can see the backside. Probably this was kind of facing the north, so it wasn't getting quite as much sun and it's getting a little straggly. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this side by just trimming it up a little bit, tightening up the leaf canopy here, and that will help this plant produce some more dense bushy growth. Makes it look, I think, a little bit better too. Let's see, what do I need to do here? This will still be facing the backside, but if we kind of keep it uh, trimmed up like that, I think it will be better for the overall health of the plant. All right, container number six. Isn't this one gorgeous? I love the colors, all of them together. It looks very fall to me, which I'm already looking forward to. So it makes me very happy to look at this container. But the centerpiece plant, like the one with the potential to grow the biggest, is the Color Blaze Golden Dreams Coleus, which is one of my favorite coleuses ever. I uh, grew this one last year, I think last year for the first time, and I put it in a lot of different situations in containers and in the landscape. I tested it in more full sun areas, and it does great. This one has had full sun, uh, and it looks wonderful, and I think it looks beautiful with all the other plants in here. The second one here is an Osteospermum called Bright Lights Red. It's a type of African daisy, and this has bulked out huge, and there are buds everywhere on it, and I think that this is a really interesting color of red like if you really look at it it almost looks like there's some apricot striping in each one of the petals i don't know if that's just me but i don't know it's just absolutely gorgeous and it looks really pretty up against this ipomea so this is a sweet potato vine called uh, red hawk a really gorgeous um, i haven't done any trimming of course and it hasn't hit the ground yet once it hits the ground i'll probably start keeping it trimmed like I kind of think this is the max length I want it to grow uh, but it provides a beautiful bold statement in the front of this pot and then the last plant here is a super bells double amber isn't that gorgeous <laughs> like this is one of my favorite colors in the garden and the reason I wanted to put this one in here is because last year I planted the golden dreams coleus next to a carding mill rose which has very similar coloring and it was one of my favorite color pairs of all of last year's plantings and I just think that they're beautiful together. Um, the leaves on this one, dark green, looking great. No water issues or anything like that. Full of bloom. So anyway, super happy with this one. So let's go to pot number seven now. So this container has three different super bells in it, all in the punch series. So right here we have the black currant punch, which is very vibrant, bright pink with the dark throat. Then we've got watermelon punch, which is kind of more of a corally bright pink with the dark red throat. And then we've got strawberry punch. What I find interesting about this container is that the strawberry punch is showing the yellow leaves and a little bit more sick looking than the other two. And the strawberry punch was that one in the second container that reacted the same way to the amount of water these containers are receiving. Um, so that just kind of goes to show that even if you're buying all super bells, not every single one of them is created exactly equal. Um, and these are just holding up a little bit better. Um, and it's kind of running true based on the fact that I had this other variety in another pot and it did the same thing. So I'm not gonna do any trimming on these two today, but I am gonna trim up this strawberry punch, um, hoping that it will kind of rebound and push new growth um, and all of those things. So just a little light trim to take off the yellow. I mean, the leaves down below look really good. That looks a lot better having it trimmed up a little bit, tidied up. Overall, I mean, this container is beautiful. If this one wasn't to perform any better than it has up to this point, I think these would eventually fill in and take over um, over the course of the rest of the season. Um, and they're beautiful, so full of color. So let's move on to container number eight. This container is really interesting. It has three plants, all of them incredibly different from one another. Um, our centerpiece plant here is a Suncredible Sunflower. Uh, which is just beautiful. It looks very um, free and very, I don't know, I like the juxtaposition between this very free flowing sunflower and the more modern kind of sleek look of this lemon coral sedum. I think it's a really pretty contrast. 
Now this one you do not have to deadhead in order to keep it blooming. In fact, some of the blooms even look really pretty. Like this one right here is a bloom that's already done. And I think it still looks really pretty there on the plant. Um, so typically I don't deadhead mine, but I did notice a branch that was kind of dried up in the center here that I need to remove. So I'm going to do that because those, it looked like the branch got bent at some point, maybe in one of our windstorms. Um, and when it does that, then the spent blooms kind of dry up a little bit too much and don't look very good. So I'm gonna take those out. And then I'm just gonna leave the rest of it. I mean, you can, I'm gonna remove the spent petals here so it looks a little cleaner. And then of course we have the lemon coral sedum, which has really bulked up and filled in. I mean, look at it, if I turn it, it's starting to grow and fill in toward the backside here and it kind of intermingles with the sunflower a little bit. Lemon coral is awesome because it can hold with, withstand a lot of different conditions in the garden. I mean, you usually think, well, you can't put a sedum in with plants like, like the coleus of all things because it won't be able to handle the water. Well, this variety does. I've planted it in multiple containers, multiple different situations in the landscape, and it doesn't matter. It does well everywhere I put it. You can put it in full sun. You can put it in a little bit more of a shady condition. It won't be the same color. It'll be a little bit darker if it's in the shade, but it still does it. Like it still lives and thrives and grows. I'm a real huge fan of this plant. And I love how it really hugs the edge of this container. It's so like, just want to touch it. It's awesome. And then the third plant is the Wicked Witch Coleus. I used this in the first container and in this container. And I think it provides a much needed dark kind of contrast to the other two plants in this, this arrangement. So quick reminder, I forgot to mention on the last container with the sunflower that that one, as well as the next two containers were all planted on June 6th. So these are not even a month old yet. This one has four plants in it. And it looks really interesting because it's like, which plant is the centerpiece? <laughs> because we've got two different high ones here and then two different low ones here. Well, this is a diamond mountain euphorbia in the back. Now this one wants to grow, I believe like two to three feet tall. So I put it back here because it's supposed to be big and we'll see how it grows through the season. Again, I think euphorbias really thrive with a lot of heat. So I think once we get consistent heat, it'll start putting on more upward growth or that's what I'm hoping for. It has bulked out a little bit like since we planted it. So I am happy about that. And then we've got a super blue angelonia, which is really beautiful. I love, blooms that come up with, like, with stalks like this, like long panicles, really beautiful, deep blue color. I planted some of these in our cut flower garden as well because they do make for a really good cut flower in a vase. Then we've got another Wicked Witch Coleus here. I kind of went to town with this plant. I really do love um, this type of coleus. Now I see that it is wanting to set a bloom right here, which um, in the Color Blaze series, they typically, when they're this small, I haven't seen a bloom on them um, because they have been bred to either bloom like wait till really late in the season to bloom um, or they won't bloom at all but sometimes you'll notice sporadic blooming not a lot um, and so i'm just going to go in with my felcos and just prune out the top of this plant um, thus trimming off the bloom i don't want the plant to send energy into blooming that's not why i grow coleus i mean if you like the bloom structure of a coleus more power to you you can leave them pollinators really do like them uh, but i tend to think that they make coleus look a little bit messy and then we have a sparkling amethyst superbina here. Again, it looks beautiful. I love the colors of this plant. And I thought it would look really pretty having kind of some purple tones in here. All right, one container left. I think that this is a great container to end on because I think it's really impressive looking. Beautiful three plants in this container. Let me spin this thing around. Like, can you believe that this was planted on June 6th? Like, just amazing. So as our centerpiece plant, we've got a perfectly pink Angelonia. Um, these are fresh ones that are just coming up right here. They're buds all over these stalks. And then we've got a Supertunia Picasso in purple, which is incredibly unique in its coloring. We've got the vibrant pink and then it's edged. All the margins are this chartreuse green color, which I thought would look really pretty and fresh kind of looking with the Ipomia. This is a Sweet Caroline uh, light green. <laughs> I had to remember a lot of names today and there's just one in here and I can't believe like I've not trained this at all to grow around the back side of the container. This is where the root ball is and it just kind of on its own curved its way around which is really fun. I love it when plants do that um, without me 
manipulating them at all. So again, all 10 of these containers are in the same exact location. They get the same amount of wind. They're all in full sun and they all get the same amount of water on the same drip system. We are going to adjust that and reduce the amount of water because I think we've been running it twice a day for 10 to 15 minutes. And I think that's a little bit too much for some of the super bells. So we'll reduce it and watch the plants. Like in particular, I'll be watching the sweet potato vines and the gallardia to see if they can handle getting less water now that they're mo more established. And that's the thing about drip systems. It's never once and done. I mean, it does take a tremendous amount of work off of your plate when you do have a drip system, but you have to make sure that all of your plants are doing okay with the amount that they're getting and it may need to be something you adjust. They've all been given water soluble fertilizer once a week. Uh, and we spray pre preventatively for budworms once a week as well. We deal with budworms, which is a small green caterpillar that eat the buds of your superbells and supertunias. So if we do not spray ours in our area anyway, we'll end up with no blooms on those type of plants. So we just find preventatively spraying is the best way to go. Anyway, I'm just so thrilled with how all of these containers are doing. And I hope this has been kind of a fun thing to see. I'm hoping our next update is as positive as this one. Um, just, it's a fun learning experience. Some of these things I've never grown together with each other and you never know if something's gonna like it um, or if they're compatible or if one takes over the other and those sorts of things. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.